Hello and welcome back to the Paleocast Gaming Network. I'm Caitlin and today I'm going to be heading back into Lost Eden. Let's jump right in. All right, welcome back everybody to Lost Eden. This is part two and it's been quite a while since I played this so I'm going to try to remember what I was up to. I think we were looking for a Patasaurus to carry us across the countryside so I'm going to talk to these guys and see if they are supposed to be a Patasaurus. The Brontosaurus no. is curious to know why we have come. Right. They are the Brontosaurus, which we covered, I think we covered in the last video, but, um, oh yes, we did. But they, yeah, they don't look quite right for numerous reasons, but if you watched the last video, if you haven't, then uh, I'll put a, a link up on the screen and you can have a look here if you're watching on YouTube. Um, otherwise, let's get started building citadels and moving around the countryside. I need to find some Apatosaurus. Aha! These ones are different. <laughs> Their necks going all over the place. Very cute. Very cute looking. These are a ah, they, they are tireless transporters. They can take you to the farthest corners of the world. Right, so let's have a look at our Apatosaurus. They'll gladly transport us when a citadel has been built here in the valley. So, first of all, they look a lot more like a prosauropod. So that's a very early evolution of sauropod dinosaurs. They look more like that than a patasaurus. A patasaurus, the skull should be a lot squarer at the front. It's almost like you're looking at a shovel. Almost. So they, the way that they would browse on the ground is they'd have this very square-shaped flat jaw and then they could just nip at ferns and whatever they were eating off the ground or even out of the trees but that very flat shape was very suited for grazing grass things like cows kind of have it to a degree um i have a little squared off faces these ones are had really really square faces but these models the faces are way too pointy and you can't really see the tails much here let's see if these they just are a parasol, they'll gladly... you can't really see the tails much but they had whip tails I'm just going to keep looking around the landscape while we chat about them, seeing as we can't see their tails. These whip-like tails, and it doesn't necessarily mean that they use them as a whip. It could, and a whip sound would create a sonic boom that could be quite scary to hear, and if you were trying to scare off a predator, then that would be very helpful. There's a paper that came out in 2020 that suggested that maybe they used their super long tails as a form of communication when they're moving in herds, because we do know they moved in herds, a form of communication to touch each other and to keep each other on track and heading in the right direction. I don't know whether that was the case as well or not. It could be sexual selection, although people tend to think that everything is sexual selection. <laughs> that is, that a... Uh, the female or male of the species, depending on what species you're looking at, are choosing their mate based on a physical trait like the length of the tail. Now, I think this is the Apatosaurus again from a different angle. No, 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 sorry, Brontosaurus, we just spoke to them. Okay, so we need to build a citadel. I've got to remember. <laughs> oh, yes, play, got to play the flute to everybody. They say they see no sign of friendship in you. Oh, well, I can give you a mushroom. These brontosaurus thank Yep, excellent, good. With the help of Chong and his followers, the brontosaurus will build a modest citadel in this place. To make a mightier fortress, they will need the skills of the Triceratops. Oh, Triceratops! Okay, I can't wait to see them. Where are they? Oh. And so the very first citadel was built in the mountains of Shamar. The Shoyans could now defend their valley against the tyrant. So let's have a look at their range of motion again here. Very much left to right, which they could definitely do. I just don't know if you would wobble that head, your head that much when walking. I feel like that for such a large animal it might get you off balance a little bit. 
There's a valley to the northeast, my lord. It's a place of great strategic value. I suggest you build another citadel there. Okay, we already are in the northeast a bit. We must find a Parasaurus to transport us. On foot, ah. we will never reach that valley. All right, let's look for our Patasaurus friends again. Okay, so there's some movement in the tail that you can see there as well. But the squared off skull, the um, front of the skull is really what you need for a Patasaurus. All right, let's give them a mushroom. Do they like them? He doesn't want it. No, okay. What about an apple? He doesn't want it. No. All right. I feel like this is a fake mushroom. We need to find a Patasaurus to transport us. If we would. Yes, I know. They're standing right in front of us. He doesn't want it. Not that either. What about a shell? We go try everything at this point. He doesn't want it. All right. What about? We need to find. Yes. A moonstone. He doesn't want it. I don't really want to show him the knife like I'm going to stab him. We need. What if I just play the flute at you? They're honored to transport oh. the builder of citadels. <laughs> That's what I needed They'll to take do. us wherever you want to go. Perfect. Show ah, me where you there want we go. Uluru. <laughs> if you didn't know, Uluru is the indigenous name of this. Um, monolithic rock in the middle of Australia. But obviously this is not the same Uluru here. Uluru it is. Adam had brought hope to the Valley of Shamar, but his adventure was only just beginning. For what use was a single new citadel against the marauding hordes of Marcus Rex? Okay, we're off on our journey with our Apatosaurus. They are at least stocky enough to be a Patasaurus. That definitely would have been much too long a journey on foot. Okay, new location. Uluru. How do they say it? Uluru. Allow me to fly off to seek out news, my lord. I will return presently. Okay. Let's just start walking around the landscape, I suppose. Maybe we'll find some Triceratops. Ah, Velociraptor! Very bad Velociraptor. <laughs> or are these supposed to be tiring? Will there actually be Triceratops here? Oh, oh. What do we have? Are these supposed to be the Velociraptor? And what we had running around before were the tiring, that Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> The Velociraptors. Yes. They are savage warriors. Even the Tyran fear them. If only you could persuade them to fight for you. I couldn't see sickle claws on their toes. They might be there. The posture is way too upright and bendy with the tail touching the ground. They should be much straighter with the tail sticking out behind them. That's classic for most dinosaur models from this era. The hands as well should be face at least facing each other so that they could clap instead of looking like they want to slap the ground and they might have even been tucked up a little bit like birds have their wings tucked up so their elbows bent back and close to their bodies and their wrists up near their shoulders just in that sort of resting position they did it seems have really really good hearing because I just read a paper that came out in 2020 that looked at the brain endocast so the the shape of the inside of the skull where the brain sits and although the brain doesn't take up the entire space there there's other blood vessels and bits of tissue you can get a bit of an idea of the size and the shape of the brain as well as the inner ear canal and it turns out Velociraptor had the right sort of shape ear canal that meant that they could keep their balance really really well which you obviously need that if you're bipedal if you're running around on two legs um, but the other idea was that they could um, well probably an active predator because of that and had a wide and high range of hearing as well and 
it's actually similar to a modern day budgerigar. <laughs> not that that tells you anything about whether they were an incredible hunter or not. Um, but the fact that they had such a, a good range of hearing, a high range of hearing, might have meant that they were listening out for prey items, um, for, for prey, and not just scavenging. There is evidence of them scavenging, but it seems like that isn't the only thing they did. Would you like some eggs? He doesn't want no. it. No, okay. I'm going to assume they don't want mushroom. Maybe we should see how the Kobu are getting on. I thought we already did. Do you want a moonstone? No. He doesn't want it. Maybe Okay, we'll go see the Kobu again. See if they want a mushroom now. <laughs> Show me where you want to go. Oh, okay, so yes, I see. Actually, it won't leave. take us long to reach Koto. Leave Uluru and go to Koto. And so Adam traveled eastwards in search of the valley of Koto to meet the Kobu people. Alright, there's our Mosasaurus friend again. So I'm still kind of enjoying this game. It does start to get a bit repetitive at this point where you're just walking across the map. Most stories live in lakes. lakes. Yes, yes, we know that. And then you're looking for each type of animal. If I throw the apple in the lake, the most source comes along. So I hope there aren't too many more parts of the world where we have to do this sort of exploration and talking to the same types of creatures and interacting with them in the exact same sort of way. <laughs> Why are there women in bikinis? Why? Welcome. Welcome to the Valley of Kodo. I am Kamala, <laughs> chief of the Kobu tribe. Why don't you have any clothes on? These people look like brave warriors, Adam. Brave because they're not wearing any clothes now, I guess. Beware these regions, strangers. The tyrant are never far away. We fight them, but many of our warriors have died. Can it be that word of your accomplishments has not yet reached this valley, Adam? How can that be possible? I'm amazing. Adam? You are Prince Adam of Mo? He who holds the secrets of the Citadel? Sound like a valley girl. Here in Kodo, we need more than a Citadel. The Tyrant are so ferocious that we can't hold them back without the help of the Velociraptors. Oh, you already talked to the Velociraptors. That's good to know. What is the secret of talking to the Velociraptors? Try to persuade the Velociraptors to help us. Oh, you need the help of the Velociraptors. Right, okay. I will see what I can do. I need to go that way. Ah, there's our Velociraptor. And the question is, what do they want? Yeah, no sickle claws as far as I can see on them. So not very good representations of Velociraptor. <laughs> Apart from numerous other things. I mean, the skull shape's all completely wrong. They did have a very long and slender skull, but um, the position of the eyes is way too high. They've got this weird lumpy bit at the back of the jaw there. I don't know what's going on. They are magnificent dinosaurs. Yes, they are interesting. With the help of the Kobu, the Brontosaurus will build a citadel in this place. But to make the citadel into a truly mighty fortress, you must also seek the help of the Triceratops. I want to, I just can't find any. A new citadel was begun in the mountains of Koto. From its walls, the Kobu would defy the enemy. another thing about these dinosaur models they've got really really large eyes the eyes would have not been that big the eye socket maybe but certainly not the actual eyeball would have been a quarter of that size I would say thereabouts I have news oh yes please the triceratops have come to Koto hooray okay where are these triceratops Hooray! There they are! Oh! <laughs> oh, okay. These look very strange. Their horns are way too wobbly. The nasal horn is very, very long. And we've got a short, 
shorter rostrumy beak bit, so and a very short neck frill. So if I, these are not very good renditions of Triceratops, but if I had to put it in a species category, it'd be genus Triceratops, I suppose it'd be Porosus rather than Horridus, just because it's got the super long nose horn and a shorter rostrumy beak. But it looks so weird. <laughs> These are Triceratops. Mm. With their skills, a modest citadel can become a mighty fortress. They are also very fond of birds' nests, but they cannot reach the finest nests high in the tree branches. So that's who I was collecting nests for. Very strange. They look like they're carved out of wood. The, um, the way that the, they've been drawn there. But yeah, those horns are just very wobbly. They could be curved downwards or curved upwards but not wobbly like that i have to say that that would be a pathology or something like perhaps these were sick triceratops well it seems that we're going to be just doing a lot of clicking back and forth and waiting for the tyrant to try to invade and be i will go with you into the valley adam of mo and waiting for the tyrant to invade and being held up by the velociraptors which is all well and good but I think I might have to stop the video here for today. Thanks so much for watching that second part of Lost Eden. I'm still enjoying the game, although it's getting a little bit repetitive with having to click around all of those places on the map and ask the same sorts of creatures for the same sorts of items and so on and so forth. But I'm still kind of enjoying it. So if you'd like to see more of this game, then just let me know in the comments and I'll upload another one. Thanks for watching.